Hello, we're going to take a look at nuclear radiation and radioactive decay. To help us to understand this, let's imagine we have an element, a solid element, probably a metal. And if we were to look at the atoms in that metal, you'd see they're arranged in nice, neat rows and columns. But we could say that for most elements, most of the time, the atoms are what we describe as stable. So the atoms in this element are stable. Now we could imagine another scenario where we have a different element. So here's a diagram of a different element. And we can look at the atoms again, but this time we might have a situation where the atoms are unstable. And in fact, it's not the atoms we describe as unstable. It's the nuclei of the atoms that we say is or are unstable. Nuclei is plural for nucleus. So those nuclei could be described as being unstable and we would describe the substance as being radioactive. So what do we mean by radioactivity? Well, here we have a rather large nucleus of one particular type of atom. And as we said, some atomic nuclei are unstable. And in order to reach a stable state, the nucleus will give out radiation as it changes to become more stable. When that happens, we describe that process as radioactive decay. So radioactive decay is when a nucleus gives out radiation as it changes to become more stable. There are three possible, no, four possible ways in which this, this can happen, and we're going to look at each one in turn. The first one is the alpha particle that can be given out from the nucleus. An alpha particle, that's the same thing as a helium nucleus. So in other words, it's got two protons and two neutrons, just like helium. We don't show the electrons because it's just the nucleus we're talking about. And as it's got two protons with a positive charge and two neutrons with no charge, it has an overall charge of plus two. So that's our alpha particle. Now next is our beta particle, the symbol you can see in the title there. It's like a B with a long tail. But this happens when we have a neutron which turns into a proton and an electron. So if you watch there, that neutron has turned into a proton and an electron and then a high-speed electron, or that high-speed electron, is ejected from the nucleus, as shown in the diagram there. This is a beta particle, and it has a charge of minus one, and it is, in fact, an electron. And as we know, electrons have a charge of minus one, so there's our beta particle. We can also have another type of nuclear decay, and this is when an unstable nucleus will give out a gamma ray to become more stable. So we could say that the nucleus gives out a gamma ray. And in fact, if you remember, a gamma ray is electromagnetic radiation given off, and it's from the nucleus. If we zoom out, we can actually see that that electromagne uh, electromagnetic radiation, the gamma ray, the gamma ray can travel very, very far. Our next type of nuclear radiation is the neutron. And we can look at two scenarios, how this is given off. In the first one, in the top diagram, the neutron is simply given off from the nucleus of the atom. And there it is, a high-speed neutron is ejected from the nucleus. But in our second diagram, it's when we have a nucleus which splits and two, maybe three neutrons are given off. And this comes from a process called nuclear fission. And we'll look at that in more detail in a future video. But that's two scenarios where we have neutrons given off as nuclear radiation. We need to look at the idea of ionizing power of the different types of radiation. So we'll take a look at alpha radiation first. I've got an atom there which is balanced and there's our alpha particle. And remember, it has a plus two charge and it's pretty large. Because it has a plus two charge and because of its size, it has a high possibility of taking away electrons from the atom. So we describe alpha particles as strongly ionizing, making atoms into ions by taking away electrons. For our second particle, the beta particle, remember that's uh, an electron, but it's very, very tiny. So there's a good chance that will pass straight through atoms without causing any changes at all. But occasionally, with its minus charge or its negative charge, it can cause an electron to be lost from its shell or from its orbital. And again, that's going to make the atom into an ion. Beta particles, we say, are weakly ionizing. In terms of our gamma rays, well, these are uh, uncharged. They have no charge on them. So we describe them as weakly ionizing because they are unlikely to remove electrons from shells of atoms. And in fact, we'd have to have a direct collision between the gamma ray and the electron in order for those electrons to be removed. So we say gamma rays are weakly ionizing. Now we could take all that information and make a summary 
an important summary of the characteristics of the different types of radiation. So first we have alpha radiation or alpha particles. They could travel about five centimeters through air, but they can be blocked, simply blocked by paper or even by skin. Their ionizing power, as we saw, is high. In terms of our beta particles, so there's our beta particle. And in fact, we can label that to show that it's an electron. And our alpha particle, we should perhaps label that it's two protons and two neutrons. So we have that in our little summary here. An alpha particle, two protons, two neutrons, but actually the same as a helium nucleus. Okay, so that's that. Let's get back to our beta particle. It can travel about one meter in air, and it's blocked by two to three millimeters of aluminium foil. So that could quite easily be blocked by foil. The ionizing uh, power for beta particles is medium. In terms of our gamma rays, well, these can travel very, very far through air. Remember, gamma rays are electromagnetic waves or electromagnetic radiation. They can travel very far in air, and we would say at least one kilometer, at least one kilometer th through air, and they would be blocked. They would need about at least 10 centimeters of lead in order to be blocked, and the ionizing power for those is low. We can add the charges for each, so an alpha particle is 2 plus, a beta particle is 1 minus, and the gamma rays have no charge at all. Okay, so there's an important summary here with the details uh, shown previous, previously in the video. So uh, lots to remember and learn, however, not too difficult, so hopefully you should get all that under your belt quite easily. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.